Flowing nearly 50 miles from its headwaters in Northeast Ohio to Lake Erie, the Chagrin River is one of 16 state-designated wild and scenic rivers. Its waters are enjoyed and relied upon by many communities of wildlife and people. That includes the city of Willoughby, which has three public parks along its banks. Daniels Park, located where one of the river's main tributaries, the East Branch, flows into the main stem, is a popular spot among anglers hoping to hook steelhead. But the river system at Daniels Park was in trouble. Eroding banks of the East Branch and main stem of the Chagrin were threatening a nearby road, polluting the waterways, and degrading habitat. Invasive plants were taking over native vegetation. Remnants of a concrete dam were impeding the movement of fish and other aquatic species, and threatening public safety. But where some saw only problems, the community of Willoughby saw opportunity. It all started with a vision. So it really started with the former mayor of Willoughby, Mayor um, David Anderson, and his vision to connect the green space along the Sugar River. So that vision was in a plan called the Magic Mile. Envisioned as a 200-acre blueway and greenway, linking Daniels Park to a park downstream known as Todd Field, the Magic Mile would also link the community of Willoughby to its riverfront. It was a vision carried forward by Mayor Anderson's successor, Bob Fiala. Every river's watershed should be thinking about the same thing. We should be thinking about how do we utilize and provide access to our rivers, as well as managing the watersheds themselves in terms of water quality and stormwater management. I would hope when we're done, Willoughby's gonna be the city that people point to to say that's the way to do it. Sharing this vision and recognizing in it the opportunity to protect and enhance the river ecosystem, the nonprofit Chagrin River Watershed Partners was eager to collaborate. Along with the city, they had identified several challenges along the Chagrin River corridor at Daniels Park. So all those things put together inspired us to work with the city of Willoughby to um, pursue some US EPA Great Lakes Restoration Initiative funding to develop some conceptual plans for restoration options. But how do you restore a river system? For help in figuring this out, the group turned to a company called Biohabitats one of the oldest ecological restoration firms in the U.S. In its simplest terms, ecological restoration is the process of assisting in the recovery of an ecosystem that has been damaged, degraded, or destroyed. To assist the chagrin in its recovery, the team developed a concept to improve the whole river system at Daniels Park so it could function the way nature intended and be safe for recreation. The plan involved removing the dam remnants, stabilizing eroding banks, rerouting the East Branch to a more stable path, and creating a wetland where it used to sharply curve. But even the most compelling visions and concepts need resources to bring them to life. In this case, that included land. Another committed partner, the Western Reserve Land Conservancy, helped on that. The Conservancy was instrumental in acquiring land for the project, including a property across the river from the park which was owned by the Andrews Osborne Academy, a boarding and day school. They needed the funds for improvements for the school and also wanted to see it protected and use the property for educational purposes. So it really was a win-win situation for everyone. Another organization that recognized the potential impact of the restoration was the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, which helps administer H2 Ohio, a program that funds projects that aim to stop pollution reduce algal blooms in Lake Erie, and improve access to clean drinking water. This project estimated that there would be a significant reduction in, in nutrients uh, entering Lake Erie as a result of, of its completion. And so that's the primary reason that this, was, uh, this project was selected for funding. With H2 Ohio funding secured, the team began transforming the restoration concept into a detailed, constructible design. It was really important for us to get uh, input from the public, including anglers and canoers and kayakers and other park users from the very get-go of the project and incorporate that input into the design plans for the restoration. Once the design was finalized and permitted, the team was ready to break ground and concrete. First order of business, remove the dam remnants 
and open the main stem of the chagrin. The dam really represents uh, a barrier that isolates uh, two ecological communities uh, and available habitat. So organisms that are downstream of the dam are unable to exploit habitat upstream. Um, and so its removal is really important to reconnecting those, bringing those communities of organisms together and restoring the ecological integrity of the river. In August of 2023, Biohabitats and their design build partner, Meadville Land Service, began removing the dam. In a matter of days, it was gone, and the team moved on to the next part of the design, improving aquatic habitat around the site of the former dam. We had some concerns from anglers about having adequate fish habitat through this uh, restored stretch. And so we worked with Biohabitats to uh, work uh, boulder installations into the design plans for that uh, reach of the river uh, that provide fish different areas uh, for refuge for feeding um, and for breeding and so forth and also great fishing opportunities for people in the river at that spot. The next step in the restoration was to stabilize eroding banks of the Chagrin's main stem. We had 10 foot high vertical eroding banks and we've stabilized that uh, through a series of Benway weirs, sort of these rock structures to redirect flow out to the center of the stream, so reducing that erosion. The design build team used a technique called live branch layering to stabilize the banks. Live branches of native plants are placed in the riverbank. As they grow, they strengthen the banks, shade and cool the water, and provide habitat. Another technique involved the use of downed trees. We installed what we called an engineered log complex on that bank to stabilize it to a more natural slope. So that's really using um, tree trunks, uh, what we call root wads, um, again, natural materials to sort of stabilize and create this habitat. So we've got all this sort of submerged wood under, which is providing great habitat. Um, you know, it's attracting macroinvertebrates, which are a food source for fish. And then when we had the East Branch, which was doing this, you know, really nasty S-curve, it was eroding uh, the road embankment. The first step in addressing the problems on the East Branch was to create a new channel for it to follow one that provided a more natural and stable route to its confluence with the main stem. The team again used natural materials and ecological restoration techniques to stabilize and improve habitat along the East Branch. We restored that through uh, this cobble riffle that is providing a lot of great habitat, spawning habitat for steelhead, um, and then again another sort of engineered log complex to stabilize the banks. The team then transformed the problematic S-curve of the old East Branch channel into a U-shaped wetland known as an oxbow wetland. So now we've got sort of this wetland habitat, which wasn't there before, providing great habitat for amphibians, reptiles, juvenile fish, but it's also attenuating stormwater and high flows. So uh, not only are we reducing flows downstream, we're reducing sedimentation downstream into Lake Erie, but we're providing a lot of great habitat. With the construction completed, it was time for the community to dig in and help. We had residents, students, uh, people interested in wildlife, um, all sorts of folks reach out saying, you know, I want to volunteer to make this project happen. And so we were able to work with Biohabitats to do a volunteer tree planting event uh, in spring of 2024 around Earth Day. And we had a great turnout. A lot of people came out to install the trees. Um, and we think that'll really help uh, with their investment in the park um, and ownership over the project long term. I've been here for 44 years and so happy to see this project come to fruition and it's just wonderful. I am so thrilled. I so good for the environment as soon as we finished two herons flew over and they're checking us out. They love it too. So the question always is uh, at the end of the day have we succeeded and this absolutely yes this project is a, is a resounding success. Today the east branch and main stem of the Chagrin River at Daniels Park are functioning as nature intended. Now a healthy, stable, free-flowing river system, it supports a wide and thriving variety of wildlife. It's helping protect clean water, and it is safely being enjoyed and treasured by the community that helped heal it. The project heavily reduced the amount of sediment coming off of the site through the creation of a new wetland and through some of the stream bank restoration work that was done. 
Uh, in fact, now we're, what we're starting to see is some deposition of sediment um, in different areas around the project site. This project is a great example of ecological restoration because we restored uh, two degraded streams and opened up fish passage uh, throughout the reach. I've already seen steelhead using the engineer log complex on the east branch um, this past year, literally two weeks after we opened up the river, um, they were up there. So uh, we can see they're using it. For the team behind the restoration, another rewarding outcome of the project has been its ripple effect which has extended beyond Daniels Park. I get calls all the time about, from potential applicants for H2 Ohio funds. For this project, there is something everywhere you look that I can point out to another applicant that they may be able to incorporate into their project. I, I think this project really gave us the courage to uh, try to tackle similar types of projects um, that'll improve the Chagrin River and other major rivers throughout Northeast Ohio. One of the most exciting ripples is occurring close to home. In the fall of 2024, Mayor Fiala and others broke ground to launch the next step forward, realizing the city's reimagined riverfront. A trail network complete with restored wetland habitat connecting Daniels Park to Todd Field downstream. What the H2 Ohio project has done for us is to show that we can do something impactful and make a difference and actually create uh, a step in the right direction to allowing people access to our riverfront. It was absolutely a first critical step to get this going because it showed our funders that the city of Willoughby is serious about the environment and our riverfront. The partners behind the restoration all agree on one key factor to its success, cooperation. Projects like this are really complicated, they take a lot of work, and it really it helps to have the collective strength of various organizations. We've got scientists, we've got environmentalists, we've got constructors, we've got politicians, we've got funders, uh, we've got land acquisition specialists and conservancies and watershed partners, and the sense of collaboration and cooperation was, was extraordinary. Looking back now over the past six or seven years, I wonder how we pulled this off. I mean, we were steadfast, we were moving forward, uh, and we, at times we didn't know how we were going to do it, how we were going to fund it, how we were going to engineer it, but we never lost sight of the end game. For me personally, this is a legacy project. I mean, very few people have the opportunity and the partners that we had to pull this off, and um, it's going to be here long after all of us are gone.